And so we're glad uh, this uh, morning to be in the house of God again. You'll be very much in prayer for us in uh, Psalm chapter 62. And just a couple of verses this morning. We may not get in a great big way, uh, but uh, we'll just try to obey the Lord. Psalm chapter 62 and uh, verse number 11 and verse number 12. Psalm 62 and verse number 11. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest every man according to his work. And I'm going to stop reading there if you bow your head. Heavenly Father God, as we come before you this morning, we thank you once again for the privilege of being in your house. Thank you for the health and the strength and the ability that you've given us to be uh, able to come down to the house of God for several weeks, Lord. We did not have uh, this privilege. We did not have this joy to be in your house. And I thank you so much that we're able, once again, th those who can, Lord, to come and, and, and meet together in the house of God. Father, Lord, for those who are unable to come or fearful to come because of underlying health conditions and other problems, Lord, I pray that you'd be with them, you'd help them. Those that are missing, Lord, this morning from the service, those that we know are sick and, and, and others we, we're not sure about. But Heavenly Father God, we know that you know all things. And I pray, Lord, that they'd be all right, that you'd help them. God, you'd strengthen them, you'd touch them, Lord. I, I pray you'd touch my little companion. God, that you'd bring healing to her, Lord, and, and, and strength to her and bring her once again, Father, down to the house of God. Lord, I pray this morning that you would help me, your servant, that you'd anoint me just for a little bit, that you'd give me wisdom, you'd give me knowledge, you'd give me understanding in your word. Give me the words you'd have me to say. And may we be a blessing to somebody along life's way. Whatever, you, whatever your will is, Lord, we'll thank you for it. Whatever's accomplished, Lord, we'll give you the glory and the honor and the praise for it all because you're worthy in the precious, sweet, and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. And I, I like to look at... Uh, this morning, as I said, we we may not uh, uh, we may be taking our time just a little bit this morning. May not get in, in a great big way, but this passage that God has uh, laid on our heart, and, and we'd like to look in, in verse number eleven, and uh, the the first four or uh, first three rather uh, words of of, of of that verse, uh, 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 Psalm sixty two and eleven, the first three. Uh, 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 well, words God hath spoken and take a thought from that this morning. And uh, we, we, we want to say this morning that, uh, uh, you know, it really doesn't matter what that I think about anything or, or what that you think about anything or what, I, what my opinion is or your opinion is or, or the thoughts or opinion of anybody else concerning anything really in the final analysis, all that really matters is what thus saith the Word of God. What God says is what matters. And, and, and I realize, just like as, as Brother Steve was uh, covering the uh, record there in, in, in Luke chapter 1 of, of uh, uh, the announcement of Gabriel to Mary that she was going to, uh, to bear the Savior of the world, that she was going to bear the only begotten Son of God. And, and she couldn't understand that. She said, how can this be, seeing and that I know not a man? And, and, and so that God had told us there that he appeared in the sixth month and, uh, to, to a virgin, a spouse, to, to a man by the name of Joseph. She had not known a man. And, 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 and the critics, my beloved friend, say that that is an impossibility that somebody can be born. But beloved friend, whatever's impossible with man is possible with God. My, amen. He's God, my beloved friend. And it doesn't matter what man thinks about it. It doesn't matter what the modernist or the liberal thinks about it, my beloved friend. Jesus Christ is the only begotten, virgin-born Son of, of the living God. And then, my beloved friend, uh, uh, anybody that don't accept that and won't receive that, you know, in order to be saved, you've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to tell you, my beloved friend, it's not, it, when, when you believe, 
You've got to believe on the Jesus of the Bible. And the Jesus of the Bible, my beloved, is the virgin born, only begotten son of of the living God. It doesn't matter what I think about it. Amen. It doesn't matter what you think about it. It doesn't matter what the liberals and the modernists think about it, my beloved. Amen. It's truth and it's fact, my beloved friend. And apart from believing on the virgin born son of the living God, they cannot be saved by the grace of God. Amen. In order to be saved, they must believe, my beloved friend. But you can't just believe anything. Amen. You must believe the record of that God gave of His Son, of my beloved friend. Amen. The Bible tells us in John 3 and 17, Amen. He that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the only begotten Son of God, my beloved. Amen. It's whether or not you believe the record of how that God gave of His Son, my beloved. It don't matter what I think. It don't matter what you think. It's what thus saith of, of the Word of God. And so we want to we want to preach just a little while, amen, on the thought that God has spoken. May I say it? We, we covered this. We covered it just uh, maybe last Sunday. We cover it all the time. And we're going to keep covering it, my beloved friend. And, amen. We're going to stand on it as long, as long as God gives us breath and gives us ability, amen, to declare the truth. We're going to stand on the truth by God's help and God's grace, amen, and declare the truth. And God has spoken, my beloved, amen, concerning his creation. I know this modern world that we're living in. Amen. They don't want to believe that, my beloved friend. But all oh, listen, he said in Psalms 50 and 1, Amen. The mighty God, even the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. The reason that the sun came up this morning, my beloved friend, is because that God willed it so, as we have said so many times. God made this thing. Amen. God created this thing, this thing didn't just happen, uh, happen to be, uh, my beloved friend. It's not some accident, uh, amen, that there is a universe. It's not some accident, uh, amen, that there is a place that's called earth, my beloved friend, uh, amen, but God made it, my beloved friend, uh, and he created it, and God has spoken, uh, amen, regarding the fact that he is a, a creator God, whether a man wants to believe it or not, uh, and according to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 3 he says that he upholds it amen by the word of his power who is that amen not only what is that but who is that amen it's a person my beloved friend amen according to John chapter 1 he said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the same that was in the beginning with God amen all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made of uh, my beloved friend, the one that stepped out on nothing uh, and made everything. That little baby, my beloved, uh, I, I thank God that that, that very, uh, I mean, the scripture said, brought forth, uh, forth her firstborn son uh, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Uh, amen. That little baby, my beloved, uh, uh, that she gave that virgin birth to. Uh, amen. He was a ruler of the universe. Uh, amen. He was the God of the universe. Uh, I thank God. He was God manifest in flesh. Uh, my beloved friend, he was the one that stepped out on nothing uh, and made every everything. He was the one, uh, amen, that said, let there be, and there was, my beloved friend, uh, amen, because he's God, uh, amen, manifest in flesh. Uh, thank God, uh, amen, what a blessing uh, that is. Uh, amen, in the beginning was the Word, uh, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, uh, now the same that was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. There's not anything that's out here in the world or in the universe, thank God, that my Jesus didn't make, thank God. He's the Creator 
of the universe. God has spoken, my beloved, amen, concerning his creation and the fact that he is creator and the, and the beloved friend, amen, it does not matter that the, that the so-called intellectuals of our day and the so-called learned men of our day, I do not want to receive that. It does not change the fact, my beloved, how that he made all things. Thank God. What a blessing that is. Amen. God has spoken concerning the matter. And it don't matter what they think. Now, I want to tell you something, beloved friend. I, and I've been, I've been called a fool. I've had I've men that I worked with ask me. I remember one specifically when he found out that I was a preacher when I first uh, moved from public works and went up, went up to the water department. Uh, one of the men, when he, when, he, when he heard that I was a preacher, he said, you're a preacher, right? Uh, I said, yeah. He said, I want to ask you. He said, when the Bible said God created all things uh, in six days, he said, do you believe that? Uh, I said, absolutely I do. And he told me, he said, you're a fool. That's all right. Think me a fool. Uh, amen. I'm going to believe God. God, my beloved friend. I'm not concerned about what the world thinks. I'm concerned about what God thinks. And what man says don't matter. It's what the saith of the word of the living God. Amen. Not only on creation, but on everything else this morning. And I want to tell you, my beloved friend, amen, God has spoken, amen, concerning his creation. I want to tell you something else. Amen. God has spoken concerning sin this morning. Amen. The Bible said that the, uh, uh, he tells us in, in Ezekiel, uh, my beloved friend, two different times, Ezekiel 18, 4 uh, and Ezekiel 18 and 20, he said the soul of uh, that sin of uh, dead uh, uh, shall die. Now we're living in a time and an age, my beloved friend, uh, amen, when they want to say that everything's all right uh, and that it won't, don't matter what you do uh, and you can live what you uh, like you want to uh, and you can do what you want to uh, and it'll be all right, but my beloved friend, that's not what the saith of the Word of God. Amen. He declared in His precious Word, He said, God is angry against the wicked every day, my beloved friend, and He will not overlook sin, and He's angry against the wicked every day, and the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Again, the book of Hebrews said, Amen, my, my beloved friend, that the wages of sin is death. Amen, this world and everybody that's in it, my beloved friend, amen, is headed on a path to destruction, my beloved, because of sin. And they're going to die lost and undone without God and go to devil's hell. Jesus said, you shall die in your sin. And he said, where I am, there you cannot come. They're going to have to do something about their sin. But there's not anything that we can do. I want to tell you, God has spoken this morning regarding sin. Amen. God has spoken against sin. It doesn't matter. Amen. Listen, Paul tells us, he said, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, neither adulterers or adulterers or effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor drunkards, nor thieves, nor extortioners, nor railers, nor any such thing as that I shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But I'm glad he didn't stop there. He said in such words, some of you, but you're washed, but you're sanctified. Thank God I'm glad I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm glad there was a way made. That God has spoken concerning sin, my beloved friend. Thank God I'm glad He's spoken regarding a way out of that sin. Oh, thank God. Amen. And that person is Jesus Christ. And he, uh, 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 there in Luke chapter 1, amen, uh, Gabriel gave uh, Mary that announcement. Uh, amen, I won't get in, 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 
into the uh, next week's Sunday school lesson too much, but I got to get in uh, just a little bit. Uh, amen. He, he spoke to her and told her, uh, Amen, that she was going to uh, bring forth, uh, Amen, her uh, uh, the only begotten Son of God. Uh, and he told her, He said, Thou shalt call uh, his name Jesus, uh, for he shall save his people from their sins. Thank God that's what the name Jesus means. It means Savior. Thank God I'm glad I've got a Savior this morning. Thank God I'm glad that there was one that came and bled and died for me on the cross of Calvary and that I might be saved. I'm glad He gave Himself for me. Amen. Oh, what a blessing that is. Oh, listen. Peter stood and preached to them. Amen. In Acts chapter 4, look about verse number 12. My beloved friend, he said, There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Oh, listen, my beloved, the liberals and the modernists can say that all they lead home, amen, all they want to this morning. How they can say that every religion is on an equal footing, all they want to this morning. And my beloved friend, they can say, amen, that one way is just as good as another, all they want to. But that does not change what God has spoken and declared that there is no name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. Jesus declared in John 14 and 6 and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the way. He said, except you believe that I am here, and you shall die in your sins. And where I am, and there, and you cannot come. Well, I want to tell you this morning, honey, amen, they're either going to receive Jesus Christ and the Jesus of the Bible the virgin-born Son of the living God. Amen. The holy Jesus. And the Jesus who is declared to be. Amen. God manifest in flesh. Holy, righteous. Amen. Amen. High in the heavens, my beloved. Amen. Or they're going to be lost and go to the devil's hell. Jesus is the only way. Amen. Well, listen, John, my beloved friend. Amen. God had spoken to him and he said, and he told him, now John, he said, the one of whom you see the Spirit ascending and abiding upon, like a dove, and abiding upon him. Now that's the one, John. Amen. And John was, was baptizing in Jordan. Amen. And the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the others of the Jews came to him and asked him and said, Art thou the Christ? And he answered and said, No. And they said, Art thou Elias? And he answered and he said, No. And they said, Why are you baptizing me? John answered, He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah, and my beloved friend, and he said, uh, he told them there, he said, uh, and my beloved friend, he said, there's a, a one among you whom you know not, uh, whose shoes like it I am not worthy to stoop down and not lose. Uh, he it is that shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, uh, whose hands in his hand, uh, and he will tear and purge his floor uh, and gather his weed into the garner. Oh, listen, and John looked out there and he saw Jesus coming. And he cried and said, Behold the Lamb of God, how that taketh away how the sin of the world. Oh, listen, John said, There's the one. He's the one. Oh, thank God. Did you ever think about this? Amen. Amen. They came and asked John about Jesus. Amen, because they, it was told them, amen, by, by John, uh, told John by his disciples that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Although Jesus baptized not any himself, but, but his disciples. And John answered and told them, he said, I, he must increase, 
but I must de decrease. Do you know what John's right? Hey Amen. John's father, Zacharias, was a priest of the law. So it would have been John's right, uh, my beloved, under the law, I to be a priest, my beloved friend, but he was not. And he never filled the office of a priest. And when John declared, he must increase, but I must decrease. You know what he was saying? If you think about it, honey, amen, he is saying the law of the priesthood is going to have to give away to the Savior in grace. Oh, thank God, what a blessing that is. He's the only way. Amen. God has spoken uh, that Jesus Christ uh, is the Savior of the world, especially uh, of them that believe. He's the only way this morning. God has spoken, amen, concerning salvation. Amen. Galatians chapter 4 and verse number 4. He said, when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made unto the law, to redeem them that were under the law. Thank God when the time was right. Amen. God sent Him. Oh, this is the one, my beloved friend, that, amen, when Moses had gathered the people together, he said, amen, a, a, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up from among you and from among your brethren like unto me. Him shall you hear in all things how whatsoever he hath commanded you. And lo, he that shall not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. He's that one, my beloved friend. And the only way that people can be saved is to hear him. Amen. As we've quoted several times here lately, Jesus, amen, in, uh, or as recorded in Mark chapter 1, began to walk to the seashore of Galilee and, and began to tell them, uh, amen, he said, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is in hand. I repent you therefore uh, and believe the gospel. Well, oh, I want to tell you this morning, God has spoken concerning salvation. There's men, there's men right now standing in pulpits where they're able to throughout this land and country. Some of them doing it over the internet. Some of them doing it over the radio. Some of them doing it over the television. And they're telling people that you've got to do this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing to be saved. And you've got to abstain from this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing to be saved. But I want to tell you this morning, regardless of what the false prophets have said, God has spoken concerning salvation. And it's in His darling baby boy, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the only hope for mankind. Amen. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 16 and 31. And thou shalt be saved and thy house like God. Amen. There was one one time that a man had been healed and Jesus came to him and asked him and said, Do you believe on the Son of Man? And he asked him, he said, Who is he, Lord? Jesus said, I that speak unto thee. And he, and he answered and said, I believe. Have you believed this morning? Thank God. Have you put your faith and your trust in him? I want to tell you that's where my trust is this morning. I know what's in Chris Christian, honey. Amen. It ain't nothing good, my beloved friend. I've lived with him for 56 years. Now, there's nothing good about him this morning. But I want to tell you, there's one that lives on the inside. And he's great. And he's wonderful, thank God. And he's able. Oh, what a blessing that is. The Bible said he is able to save unto the uttermost them that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever live up to make intercession for the saints. I'm here to tell you, if God does it, amen, if Jesus does it, it'll be done right, amen. It'll make a change in you, amen. It'll make a change in you. I, I made this statement there on Wednesday night, amen. Amen. Uh, uh, if you ever become acquainted with Jesus, if you ever genuinely have a meeting with Jesus 
an encounter with the Son of God. Amen. With God manifest in flesh. With Emmanuel. And God with us. Amen. You cannot walk away from that encounter and ever be the same again. He'll change you. Amen. Peter said being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things passed away, and behold, all things have been made new. You'll never be the same again. I want to tell you, God has spoken concerning salvation. And you remember those of you that were here on Wednesday night, uh, Micah 6 and 8. Amen. The, uh, the message or lesson, how, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Amen. There may be a little bit of teachy preaching that we did on Wednesday night from Micah 6 and 8. And he said, that He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth thy Lord require thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. I want to tell you, God's spoken concerning sin this morning. He's declared the soul of sin if it shall die. But I want to tell you this morning, thank God, He's declared if you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, if you will come to Him in true repentance, and not only sorry that you're a sinner, but casting your sin at the altar, amen, abandoning it and giving it up and turning away from it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and cry out to Him for mercy. He said He'd save you, my beloved friend. Thank God I'm glad I've been saved by the grace of God. Amen. Thank God I can say that I've been redeemed. There's a lot of things I can't say. I know there's many people that are better Christians than I am. Amen. I can see that. I know there's many ministers that are better ministers than I am, better preachers than I am. I can't hold a candle to Brother Kenny. Amen. Or Brother Pat, Brother Darius Horn. Amen. Brother J.W. DePew. Some of those great men that I... I admired so much growing up and coming up, amen. Thank God, Brother Henry and Brother Frank McCann, great men of God. Amen. I can't hold a, a, a candle to them, thank God. But I can tell you one thing, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm saved, but I belong to Him. I'm not my own anymore. I've been bought with the price, a uh, uh, precious price, uh, uh, the blood of, as of the Lamb without spot. And without blemish. Thank God God has spoken this morning concerning salvation. And it don't matter what religion says this morning, my beloved friend. Amen. When it, when it comes down, uh, when you come down to the end of the road, uh, the only thing that's going to matter is whether or not the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, the darling Son of God, has been applied to your heart. And to your soul. That's the only thing going to matter. Amen. God, God's not going to call you up before Him and ask you if you're a Baptist. God's not going to call you up before Him, my beloved friend, at the judgment seat, at the, at the, at the, at the throne of judgment. We're getting ready to get to that in a minute. Amen. And ask you whether you're a Methodist or, or a Presbyterian or a Pentecostal. Amen. Or, or a Seventh-day Seventh Adventist or anything like that, my beloved friend. The only thing that's going to matter is whether or not the blood has been applied. Whether or not you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. One of the saddest things I've ever heard when I witnessed to somebody, it was them to tell me, well, I'm a Baptist. Or, well, I'm a Methodist. Or, well, I I'm a Presbyterian. That's not what I asked them. And that's not going to matter. I want to tell you something. There's going to be millions of Baptists in hell. There's going to be millions of Methodists and Presbyterians Lutherans, my beloved friend, and Pentecostals in hell. Why? Because they've never truly received the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Oh, listen, my beloved friend. God has spoken concerning salvation. I want to tell you something this morning. I 
told you it's going to get to this. God's spoken concerning judgment. Amen. Amen. Psalms 9 and 8 says that he shall judge the world in righteousness. Amen. Acts 17 and 31, uh, Paul's message on Mars Hill. Amen. Along about verse number 30, I think it was, he said the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded the all men everywhere to repent, for he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, and hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. Thank God. Amen. We're going to face him one day in judgment. I'm going to tell you something. I'm glad I got my sins judged at Calvary. Amen. I put my faith and my trust in the finished work of the cross of Calvary. I will not be judged of my sin. I will be judged for my stewardship. And we'll get to that in a minute. But I will not be judged for my sin. Thank God my sin was judged at Calvary. Jesus paid my sin debt. I don't have to. Amen. What a blessing that is. Thank God. Amen. Oh, listen. Amen. Judgment is coming, my beloved friend. He hath appointed a day in, which, in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. Oh, listen, my beloved friend. Amen. Revelation 1 and 7. And this, my beloved friend, is not talking about the believer. This is a different occurrence. This is not the catching away of the bride. Amen. This is the second uh, coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to this earth. Revelation 1 and 7, he said, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Amen. They're going to see him one day after a while. But when they see him, it's going to be too late. Amen. There's something else you and I are looking for. We're looking for his appearing. You see, he talks about his appearing and his kingdom. That's two different things. Amen. That's two different occurrences, my beloved friend. You see, when he appears to catch away his bride, amen, beloved friend, he's going to come as a thief in the night. The world's not going to see him then. Amen. My beloved friend, because they've got their chance now. The day of grace, my beloved, is, is now. Amen. The, the, the door of grace is open now. But one day he's going to shut it, my beloved. Jesus told them, uh, told John there, told, tells us in one place in the book of Revelation, he said, I am he that openeth and no man shutteth. And shutteth and no man openeth. The door's open right now. He opened it at Calvary, my beloved friend. He opened it when he arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He opened the door of grace then, my beloved. But one day after a while, he's going to shut the door. My beloved friend, amen, he's coming back to judge this world in righteousness. Amen. He came the last time as a lamb. The Jews were looking for a lion. Today they're looking for a lamb. But the next time he comes, he's coming as a lion, my beloved friend. The lion of the tribe of Judah. I want to tell you, my beloved, amen. God has spoken concerning judgment. And he's spoken concerning judgment for the believer too, my beloved friend. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. I'm going to turn over there right quick and read it. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse number 11. He said, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. These folks that say you can get it some other way. Amen. It's not going to happen. No other foundation can be laid but Jesus Christ. He is the tried and true foundation. He's the only way. Amen. There's folks that are thinking they're going to get in on the word of Joseph Smith and they're going to be fooled. Amen. 
they're going to be fooled. There, there's people, my beloved, uh, amen, that think that they're going to get in uh, because of this one and that one. But beloved friend, they're going to be fooled. And he said in verse number 12, If any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, a stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it shall be if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon he shall receive a reward if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss but yet he, he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And the Bible declares in 2 Corinthians, I believe it is, that we, talking about the church, shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, that judgment seat of Christ and that great white throne judgment there are two different things my beloved friend we will be at the judgment seat of Christ we will not be judged for our sin, we will be judged my beloved for our stewardship amen and I can tell you right now I know that there's going to be some of mine that I'm going to see go up and smoke amen there were times that God said go and I didn't go. Amen. Now, there were times that God said do this, but I just half-heartedly did it or halfway did it. And there were times, my beloved friend, that I did what God told me to do, but I did it for the wrong reason. Amen. Well, I want to tell you, and I believe there's going to be a lot of us. I, I, he said that he's going to wipe off all tears from off all faces. All. That means everybody's going to be shedding them, beloved. I believe we've all got reason to shed tears because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thank God we've been justified freely by the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Thank God I hope when I come down the end of the way I'll be able to receive some kind of reward. And I had a, 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 an uncle who was a minister and he didn't like that. He didn't believe in that. He preached against it. And in his mind, uh, the people coming for rewards and coming for crowns, and the Bible does teach that there are crowns that you can win. Amen. Read it and study it. It's, 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 it's there. And he thought that that was so man could brag and man could boast, but that's not the point. Amen. Those elders... Those 24 elders that had, had those crowns on their head, they bowed before him. And they cast their crowns before him and said, Thou art worthy. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Oh, listen, my beloved friend. God has spoken concerning judgment. We're going to meet it one day after a while. Not going to escape it. Amen. I've heard all my life people say, uh, there's two things that you can't, Escape, one of them's death and the other one's taxes. Well, they're wrong on the taxes. Those people have beat the IRS. Amen. Beat the government. And got away with it. A lot of them been caught, but there's been a lot got away with it. But I want to tell you, my beloved friend, there's, it's death and judgment. He said it's appointed and the man wants to die. And after this, the judgment. There will be no getting out of that. Amen. We're all going to face it one day after a while. I'm so happy my sin was judged at Calvary. Amen. I, I know we didn't get in a big way or anything like that this morning.